All right, so just a quick video for you Mac users today. A quick one, yes, but if you're interested in accomplishing more in less time with minimal effort, well, I think you're gonna love this. I've got a very simple Mac app to share with you that does one thing very well. And it's one thing that you constantly do, so it's going to save you countless hours as you multitask on your Mac in the days and weeks and months and years to come. Oh, and guess what? As great as this app is, it's free. No one-time purchase, no subscription, just download, install, configure, and you're set for life. So if you're interested in that, here we go. Okay, so the app is called Hotkey. The one thing that it does, and does very well, is it allows you to assign global keyboard shortcuts to launch or switch to, if it's already open, any app on your Mac. Now, before I go any further, I know there will likely be some people out there clamoring. You know, you can do this in Raycast, right? Or you can use Apple's built-in automator app, or you can assign keyboard shortcuts to open an app via Apple shortcuts, or in various other ways. Sure, you're not wrong. But hear me out. Hear us out, hear us out, hear us out. The simple hotkey interface is so great. It just makes it so easy to not only assign keyboard shortcuts to launch an app, but it couldn't be any easier to toggle these shortcuts on or off or change them on the fly. You'll see this in a second as I walk you through it. Okay, so first off, to install the app, just open up the App Store on your Mac and do a search for hotkey. Alternatively, you can click on the App Store link that I've included in the description of this video. So click install and go through the necessary process and permissions to allow this thing to work. Once you've got it installed, let's take a look at what you can do here. What I do is, for easy access, whenever I need to make any changes to my keyboard shortcuts, which isn't very often, I keep hotkey visible in my menu bar up top. Let's go ahead and click on preferences. This is where you'll add in all the keyboard shortcuts for your apps. As you can see, I've already set up a ton here. But just so you can see how to create one from scratch, let's say I want to add a keyboard shortcut to launch System Settings. Yes, in case you didn't know, System Settings is actually an app that lives by default in your Applications folder. So let's simply click the plus button here in the lower left. It brings up this dialog box to select an app within your Applications folder. I just start typing SYS and it jumps down to system settings. Then just click choose. The next step of course is to add whatever keyboard combo you want to use to open your system settings. Thing is the way I've set all mine up is I use the option key plus usually the first letter of the name of the app that I want to open. So for example, I use option P to open Photoshop option I to open Illustrator, and so forth. Now, I already use option S to open Spotify, so what I do is, whenever there's another app where S would be the obvious choice, I add the control key to it. So for me, if I wanna to switch to Safari, which I occasionally use as a secondary web browser, I use control option S. But hmm, now I've got system settings, so I could try a third keyboard combo for the letter S by doing something like Shift, Control, Option, S. But honestly, going beyond two modifier keys is a bit excessive for me, both in terms of remembering it in my head, but also stretching my fingers to press all those keys simultaneously. So instead, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use Option Y to open system settings because of that Y in the word system. But as I try to lock that in, notice. Hotkey immediately warns me of the conflict that has arisen. I feel the conflict within you. As I type option Y, notice it actually opens PullTube, the app that I use to download videos from YouTube. I initially assigned option Y to PullTube because as I mentioned earlier, I already use option P for Photoshop. So I thought, okay, I'll use option Y to download YouTube videos with the PullTube app. Made sense at the time, but now I want to use option Y for system settings. So what I'll do is, since I don't have a second P app assigned, I'm going to click up here to change the keyboard shortcut for pull tube from option Y instead to control option P. This of course frees up option Y. So now notice when I press option Y, I get the desired effect, opening system settings 
no more conflict. There is no conflict. The reason why I walked you through this scenario is I wanted to show you how it's not only easy to add a new keyboard shortcut to open an app, but it's also super easy to change them after the fact. All of your app launching keyboard shortcuts are neatly listed in this one hotkey app. Oh, and one more thing. Perhaps there are apps that you no longer use or you just don't foresee using today or this week. Well, what's cool is you can either select an item in the list and tap the minus button down here to permanently delete it if you don't think you'll ever use it again, or you have this nifty option to just temporarily turn off any of your keyboard shortcuts by unchecking it here in this leftmost column. As you can see here, I had temporarily toggled off my shortcut for Adobe Premiere 2024, which I use option R to launch. But since I'm exclusively using Adobe Premiere 2025 now, I'm gonna go ahead and permanently delete that shortcut. So I just select it and tap the minus button down here. One suggestion I have for the developer, currently your app shortcuts show up in the order that you've created them. So since I just created this new shortcut for system settings, it shows up at the bottom of my list. But would be nice if you could list all your shortcuts alphabetically or have them sort by active versus inactive, such that as soon as you toggle one off, it scoots to the bottom of your list. That would be nice, but at least you do have the option to drag items up and down to manually order them. As you wish. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of some of the additional options that you can configure. Nothing super complicated here, but just some nice details where you can really tailor the app experience to your own liking. For every app in your list, you can click on the options button to choose whether or not you want to toggle visibility of application. At first I was like, why is this even here? As of course I wanna make the app visible when I switch to it via the keyboard shortcut. But then I realized what this option is really about. Basically, if this box is checked, it means you can use the keyboard shortcut to both show and hide the app. For example, I assigned option F to Finder. Notice how when I press that combo, it does in fact switch to Finder, and if I press option F again, it will immediately hide Finder. This is useful if you've got an app, perhaps with several windows of it open in the background, and you quickly wanna hide that app while not necessarily hiding all apps other than the one you're currently using. Like in this case, if I'm using Apple Notes, and I've got Spotify open over here, which I want to remain visible, but all these Finder windows are cluttering up my screen, I can hit Option F to switch to Finder and then immediately press it again to hide Finder, which will automatically bounce me back to the app I was previously using, Apple Notes. If I uncheck Toggle Visibility of Application, notice how after using Option F to switch to Finder, if I press Option F again, nothing happens. It's really up to you, whichever you prefer, and cool that you can designate your preference on a per app basis. Oh, and as for this other option, it's kind of a redundancy, not really necessary here, because all it seems to do is the same thing that would happen by clicking the leftmost checkboxes in the list view, basically temporarily enabling or disabling any given app shortcut. But whatever, just letting y'all know that it's here. Okay, a couple more options. These are a bit more useful in terms of customizing your experience. If you look down here at the bottom left, first is a checkbox for whether or not you want the hotkey app to show up in your dock. I leave this box checked as I consider this whole thing as a background process, not an active app that I want to constantly see in my dock. If you were to check the next box, hotkey will no longer show up in your Mac's menu bar up top. I would recommend leaving this unchecked unless you're comfortable using a keyboard shortcut to launch hotkey itself, which we're gonna set up in a couple minutes. But first, the next option is whether you want the app icons to show up larger or keep the smaller size when accessing hotkey up in the menu bar. I prefer the tighter layout with smaller icons, so I leave this unchecked. The next option is show visual feedback. If this is checked, you'll see the app icon appear for a second or so before it disappears. It's up to you, whichever you prefer. Me, sometimes I like seeing it, but other times I uncheck this, so it just quickly switches apps without any visual indicator. And the last of these is the option for having hotkey start automatically every time you boot up your Mac, which I highly recommend. Once you get in the habit of using keyboard shortcuts to launch your apps with hotkey, you're just always going to want it doing its thing in the background. 
All right, as good as this app is, I've got even more good news for you. Thing is, I didn't even realize this at first because the hotkey app is not really marketed this way and they don't really tout it as a feature, but they really should because this is super cool. You see, hotkey is not just an app launcher, but you can use it to open up your favorite folders. And you can even use it to open up specific files. I used to use Automator to create shortcut launchers to my most used folders, but that was such a pain compared to how quick and easy it is to do so within Hotkey's interface. So I ditched all those previous Automator services that I created and instead recreated them all here in Hotkey. It took me only a couple minutes to do so. And as I've been saying, it's super easy for me to change these whenever I want to. So check this out. I've shown you already how I like using the option key and a letter to open up apps, like option P to open Photoshop. But to open my favorite folders, what I've done is, I just use the control key plus a letter to open those. So for example, to open my downloads folder, I simply press control D. To open my screenshots folder, which is a folder in my Dropbox account where I set CleanShot X to save all of my screenshots and screen recordings to, I simply press Control S. To open my Applications folder, I just press Control A. On and on, you can set up as many of these as you like, as long as you can remember them, of course. And the super cool thing is, these are all global shortcuts, meaning I can be actively using Photoshop and press Control D and it'll immediately open up my downloads folder. It's not like I have to leave Photoshop and go to Finder for the keyboard shortcut to work. Likewise, let's say I'm in Premiere and I just rendered a video. If I want to immediately access it, well, I just tap Control K and that opens up my Caslow renders folder. Super convenient. And when you factor in how often I'm jumping to so many of these favorite folders, just saves so much time every day, every week, all throughout the year. And like I mentioned earlier, if you've got a specific file, probably a template of some sort, you can use hotkey to open that file as well. Just like you did with apps and folders, just navigate to the specific file you want, select it, and then just add the keyboard shortcut you wanna to use to open that file. I just love how this is such a lightweight yet significant productivity app that helps you use your Mac so much more efficiently. If you're an old school person who was always moving your cursor via mouse or trackpad down into the dock in order to click on an app to switch to it, you got to factor in how much time it takes you to constantly be doing that motion. Plus the fact it sort of takes you out of your creative flow, you know? Switching from one app to another back and forth continuously throughout the day should be a totally seamless experience. If you're an experienced Mac user, I'm sure you already know about using command tab to bring up Apple's default app switcher. I'll admit, I still use that when switching back and forth between two apps, but using keyboard shortcuts via hotkey is just way more efficient overall. If you've got a lot of apps open, using command tab as your app switcher is not efficient at all. Just look at how many times I'd have to keep hitting the tab key to move across the list of open tabs. Not to mention the fact that Command Tab will only work with open apps, whereas Hotkey will do that, plus it'll fire up any of your configured apps that aren't even open yet. All right, one more thing before we wrap this up today. I can't believe I've never got around to doing this before, as I would always move the cursor up here to the menu bar to access Hotkey whenever I wanted to add or modify apps in the list. But I'm actually going to use Hotkey to create a keyboard shortcut to launch Hotkey itself. Makes sense, right? So I'm doing this for myself right now, and I suggest you do this as well. So I'll just click on the plus once more and choose hotkey. And I'm gonna assign it a keyboard combo of control option H, since I already use option H to launch Hootaspot, which is another super useful app, part of my setup subscription, but more on that in a later video. So now that that's set up, anytime I wanna add a new app or tweak my hotkey shortcuts, I'll simply press Control Option H. And since that's in place now, I may as well reduce my menu bar clutter ever so slightly by checking this hide menu checkbox to remove it from there. Nice and streamlined. Now the only way for me to access hotkey is by pressing Control Option H. All right, that is literally everything you could possibly want to know about this nifty little productivity app called Hotkey. Let me know in the comments if you do decide to start using it. 
Hopefully you do, as I just think this thing is great. Again, it's free, so what are you waiting for? And yeah, if you love discovering nifty little apps like this that can help boost your productivity and creativity, well, be sure to click like on this video and subscribe because that's what this channel is all about. All right, see you in the next video. Mm, what to watch next?